Welcome to Rick's Corner, where we talk wrestling, bodybuilding, and more. On. Now, John told us, I had told you when he came over, that he was the booker at the time. He was the, he was the main heel, and he was a brute, as you know, and his brother Chris wasn't down here, but he wrestled together. But when John would book the shows, like I said, he would always book me with him. And I thought, why is he doing this? Um, I'd like to work with the other guys, because I know when I'd worked with him, it's like working with the teacher of the class. He, he's going to lead you through the whole thing. You're going to do exactly what he wants to do. You're not going to do what you want to do, and that's the match. But I found that he liked working with me, and I, I guess I took that as a compliment now, or wilt now. And I did do what he said, and he did work for me, and he did sell for me. And uh, I can't complain. He was a wonderful guy. I wish he was still alive today. I mean, he was an amazing dude. And we'll never forget the only way to spell wrestling is T-O-L-O-S. Now my favorite part of of this special edition of Rick's Corner, I'm going to say a big-time wrestler from the 70s, someone that you faced. You tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? Yep. Black Gordman. Uh, brutal uh, knives and brass knuckles and a gun because he carried them in his bag. Oh, nice. And I'll tell you why. Today, today's fans, uh, they watch wrestling. Some of them are picking their nose, looking away. Some are eating popcorn. They're not really into it. And I, well, I want to get into that in a minute because they're not involved in the characters as much as they were back then. Gordman and Goliath being vicious heels and, and with the Hispanic audience, these people hated them. They would literally chase them out of the building and yeah. try to kill them. Right. So they had to have brass knuckles, guns, and knives to, to fend for themselves. John Tolles would park three or four blocks away. They'd rip off his antenna and steal his hubcaps. Superstar Billy Graham, would, I'd wrestle him, and he'd leave me off a few blocks away. He'd go and park and have to meet him there because they would attack you outside the building. Today, they don't do that. So, in your answer to who, who uh, Black Gordman, guns, knives, and brass knuckles. Let me throw another name at you. Kenji Shibuya, one of my all-time favorites. Kenji Shibuya. His name's Bob. He lived on soup. Kenji Shibuya's name was Bob? His name was Bob. He lived in the Bay Area. I think he sold cars once in a while. Um, but he had a neck, like a huge neck. He was a vicious-looking guy. And he also worked in the office down here. He also worked for Roy Shires in San Francisco as the booker. And he liked me as well. He booked me. When he was in the office, I worked six nights a week. Wow. And I'd work with him once in a while, and he'd just be, he was like a gentle lamb. You know, he'd give me a couple of signals in the back, let's do this, do that, come on, take it home. Um, Tell me what goes through your mind every time you hear the name, one of the all-time greats, Freddie Blassie. Freddie Blassie, <laughs> Shane will appreciate this. When Adam was born, I showed Freddie a picture of my older son, Adam, and Freddie looked at him. He said, I could just eat him up. He's so cute. This was at Zookie's Deli in Santa Monica in the mid uh, well, this is the 70s, late 70s. And um, Freddie uh, was the best heel ever. He would file his teeth and bite people. Sure. He just had the gimmick down for sure. But he was uh, the nicest man. He was just a, a wonderful human human being. He had a ton of friends. Gene LaBelle was like one of his best friends. Johnny Red Shoes Dugan was one of his best friends. Hank Matheny, the referee. Jimmy Lennon, who's sure. passed away. And, and uh, Dick Lane, of course. It was just a tight group. As Gene said in our interview, he says it was a family back then. It's just no longer a family. Right. You know, it's scattered all over the world. The indie shows and WWE guys are getting released, hired and fired all the time. There's a big drug issue. Um, it was just different. The entire wrestling world recently and still is mourning the loss of the maniac, the golden Greek, whatever you want to call him, one of the greatest shows in the history of wrestling, John Tolis. What comes to mind when you think about John Tolis? Polka dot shirts. <laughs> <laughs> He, I worked out with him at Gold's Gym in Venice as well, and he drove a big Chrysler, oh, town, it was not a town car, but a Chrysler, one of those Imperials, and he always either wore a dark blue polka dot shirt with white, or a burgundy one with white polka dots, or a green one with white polka dots, and I said to him, how many polka dot shirts do you have? He says, I have an array of about 12, <laughs> and I just rotate them. I happen to like polka dot shirts, and they look good at him. He was a really nice looking man. I mean, when he was dressed up, and he, was, he could have been a senator, um, but he's just a great guy, and just training down at the beach with him and hanging out with him. It was an amazing guy. How about the big cat, Ernie Ladd, number 99? Well, I had one match with him, as I said, and hit me in the chest and broke my capillaries. <laughs> he was a big man, but he was okay. He was a good guy. You know, I didn't have a lot of contact with him. He didn't stay at the Olympic too long while I was there. He was in and out and doing other things, and I kind of stayed with guys who came in from other states and other cities and worked with him. When I was a kid in the 70s, watching wrestling every Saturday night, like I mentioned on Lucky Channel 13, Richmond 95171, Dick Lane was the voice of wrestling. Wrestling with Judo Gene LaBelle, who was just with you last week here in Rick's Corner, a legend in his own right. Dick Lane, what did he mean to wrestling back in the 70s? Well, Dick Lane originally was an actor. He did some movies with the Three Stooges, and he, he used to sell cars. He used to call them a fender slapper, you know, where they bring the car by. Hey, you get this car for only 1995, and bring the next one. They did a, a horseshoe type driveway where they bring cars through, and he'd sell them. But he was the voice of wrestling. 
We had holds, and we have names for holds, like headlocks and arm bars and all that, but he made up his own names. He's got him in an overhead chromium crotch lock right now, <laughs> and we're not quite sure where he's going, but I see his hand on his genitalia. I mean, he would come up with stuff that was so outrageous, but it was funny, and, oh, people, yeah. and people loved it. Ah, come on, Blassie! You know, he was just, Dick Lane was classic, and Judo Gene LaBelle. How fun was it to work with Judo Gene? Judo's a character. I mean, Judo Gene, he's a character. He's just, he wrestled, and not a lot of people know this, as the hangman. He had a mask and a full body suit. And he he was, was the hangman? Yeah, with a little noose. Who knew? See? That's unbelievable. Actually, See the things you find out in Rick's Corner? Actually, Gene LaBelle was the hangman. Go figure. Yeah, it's actually in his book, a picture of him as that. But uh, he is actually a real shooter. He knows how to take you down and choke you out yeah. and break your arm and whatever else goes with it. Uh, however, he's, he's not that type of guy. God bless Judo, June, yeah. Judo Gene LaBelle. You thought, you thought you were getting Rick's Corner today and you were going to hear about me, but trust me when I say, nobody wanted to hear about me. You wanted to hear about this guy. It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time. Stay tuned for Rick's Corner. I'll have more guests to come. And thank you, Roger, for coming. Are you kidding? There's a thrill for me. Thank you, Rick. I might even let you body slam me. <laughs> yeah, I love it. See you, everybody. Thank you for watching and stay tuned next time for another episode of Rick's Corner.